Well, welcome back to the art room. Mrs. Larby here. This week we're going to be putting together several of the elements and principles of design that we've been talking about through other lessons. This week we're going to be drawing the eye of a dragon. The supplies that you're going to need is one sheet of paper, a pencil, and your black coloring supply. So for the paper, you can use white paper. If you're going to be using colored pencils or watercolor to color it in, I would recommend white paper. If you have construction paper, this is going to work really well if you're using crayon or oil pastels to add color. We'll be doing that next week, but we need to plan ahead this week and think about what we might use. The construction paper is really fun because it gives us these areas of color already there. We don't have to color everything in quite so solid. It also gives the tone to the artwork because there's this background color behind everything that's the same. Um, it's just going to add a little more vibrancy to it. So your choice, white paper or construction paper. Also for your black coloring supply, I'm going to be using a colored pencil today. You could also use a Sharpie. Um, a black pen would work. If you have your black crayon, that's great. Just try to maybe take the end that's the most sharp to use for this project. All right, grab those supplies. We'll get started. This week we're going to be looking at drawing. We're going to use this idea of a dragon to help us learn the different parts of how we would draw an eye. This is also going to show us a little bit about the difference between what a human eye would look like, an animal eye would look like, all these little things in our artwork that give the viewer an idea of what this creature is without just spelling it out for them. We can do that by the details that we put into our drawing. So let's get started. We're gonna begin with our coloring supply. So I'm using um, my black uh, colored pencil today. We're gonna start by drawing this outside shape of the eye. So you get to decide how wide it's gonna be, how long it's gonna be. Here's one thing to consider. Um, on this sample that I drew, I didn't draw my eye straight over to the side. I drew it up at a diagonal. Just something to consider. A little interest to your picture. So you might want to air draw first. Decide where you want it to go. I tend to always move mine way up too high on my paper. I'm gonna to try to bring mine down just a little. Curved line here and a curved line to the bottom. So here's our outside shape of the eye. Now let's add in the round colorful iris part. No color this week, but we're going to give a spot to it. You get to decide how large it's going to be. Kind of like when it goes off the paper a little, you don't see all of it. And then we're going to add little curves to the corner. This is the part, if you look in the mirror, that um, is kind of pink. It's where the muscle is holding your eye in place. If you look on animals, many times this will be black. So I'm going to color these edges in black. This is one of the first hints that we can give that this is not a human eye, but that this is more of an animal eye. You might choose to add in a different color here. That would be fine. You were the artist. Now I'm going to add mine black just to give that nod towards an animal. All right, now we're going to look at the pupil or the black part of the eye and we're going to switch to our pencils at this point. I want to take just a moment to talk about what this pupil looks like. In a human eye, it's round, but the animal pupil is generally shaped differently. A lot of times it's this ellipse shape. It has um, a point at the top and the bottom. So you can choose what shape. You want it to be a more human shape, a more animalistic shape. You can choose whether you want it to go straight up and down in a vertical way, or if you want it to go horizontal. That would be very different. Also, it doesn't have to be the shape of an ellipses. This is an ellipses where it's got a point at the top and the bottom. Um, but I noticed in some artwork that I was viewing with different dragons, different people's ideas, that sometimes the people are different shapes. So I created this one with a little different shape. I've seen it in a lightning bolt type of shape, a very small slit down the middle kind of shape. So you get to choose the personality of your dragon. I'm going to go with just this tall but really thin ellipses. And the reason we're using our pencil is because we're going to add one more detail to the eye, and this is the highlight. The highlight is where the light reflects off the moisture in the eye. This shows life. So if you want your picture to look more lifelike, you definitely want to include this highlight. Let me show you really quick this painting. This is called Girl with a Pearl Earring. It was painted in the 1600s by Vermeer. And it shows the highlight in the eyes where the light's reflecting from the window. Vermeer was known for painting light into his picture. So we get to learn from the master of painting light here. 
um, how to add this into the eye. This could be done by adding simply an oval to the side. Sometimes you could add an oval with a smaller one. On this artwork, I added more of a crescent shape. On this one, I added a little bit more of a rounded shape. So again, your choice. I think I'm gonna go with the oval. Kinda like for it to intersect the pupil of the eye. And I'm gonna add two spots. Anywhere that your shapes have overlapped, you now want to erase. And that's why we used our pencil. <laughs> now we can go back over it with our black coloring supply. Just give it a bold outline. And again, you may choose to not have your pupil black, but I'm gonna go ahead and color mine in. I like these. I know that I'm gonna be adding a lot of color soon or next week to my artwork. So I like to add in these bold, dark sections. Uh, it just kind of gives the eye a place to rest, I think, the viewer's eye a place to rest when they're, when they're looking at your artwork. All right, so we have the basic form of our eye done. We're gonna start working our way out to the areas around the eye. These are gonna be the parts that are protecting the eye, the eyelid that's gonna close so that the eye can be protected. And we're gonna be able to give our eye a little bit of form by how we draw this. Here's what I mean by that. If you remember back to the optical illusion artwork that we did, uh, we had these sections and we talked about how as things went further away, they got closer together. But as they came up closer to where the viewer was, they would get wider. And this created that curved effect, this form to it. So we're gonna do the same thing around the edges of our eye. We're gonna start in the corner small, and we're gonna have it go wider as it gets towards the center of the eye and then back down small as we go towards the corner. I'm gonna do a couple layers of these. Dragons would need a lot of protection, right, over their eye. And I'm gonna add another to the bottom. We'll come back and add some more detail to that in just a minute. As we're going further away from the eye, we're gonna to start to get larger and we could even change shape. I'm gonna start adding some scales. Since scales overlap, I'm gonna just let my uh, shapes overlap as well. I'm gonna start on the corner of the shape to make the next one. You can choose what shape this looks like for you. I'm using the same idea. I'm gonna to start to get larger as I go towards the center of the eye. I'm gonna let it go right off my paper too. And then I'm gonna have my shapes get smaller and closer together as they go towards the corner. All right, so we have a couple of sections. We're using different patterns. We're varying, we're creating interest. Uh, here's where you can have fun. We're gonna create our biggest patterns now, furthest from the eye. You could add in something kind of like this horned look around the edges. Uh, a bigger pattern towards the back. How would you envision these scales looking? How would they overlap? Would they be geometric shapes with angles? Would they be more of these rounded kind of shapes? Because they're the furthest from the eye, they're probably gonna be the largest pattern that you add to your paper. Again, letting it go off the sides. All right, so we have our eye, we have our sections for the eyelid, we have some design back here where our scales begin to get larger. One last thing I wanna have you consider adding. Right around the eye, we're gonna add our smallest detail. This is gonna help our, our eye, the viewer's eye, to focus into the center. Right now we have these big sections. There's, these are the largest, but they're kind of similar in size. Here's a couple of ways that I added detail closest to the eye. So in here I went in and added these oval kind of shapes. Here it was more of a rope-like shape. Let me show you an example of how this might look. I can add these wider lines, kind of curving them around the edge. And this uh, starts to divide it up, but I'm still seeing kind of the same look here. Watch what happens when I make these sections get smaller and smaller. All right, I think it's starting to bring the eye in. The viewer has somewhere to look. Let's go a little bit smaller. A 
you can decide here how you're going to be adding in how much you want to add in but as you get smaller it really starts to help the viewer's eye be able to focus in on the center so you can decide large sections or smaller how you want to divide up this part right around the eye And here we are with our finished drawing. We have uh, discussed things that make it look more animal-like versus human-like. We've talked about adding the highlight uh, to give it that appearance of life. And we've talked about varying our sizes of pattern to create interest and to create a little focus in our artwork as well. All right, I'll see you back here next week when we get to add color.